Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Karibu Fine Art. I'm Priya, the artist behind KaribuFineArt.com. My channel will mainly focus on the paintings and drawings and sketches I'll be doing. Um, I'll try my best to put at least one video per week so that whoever um, will be subscribing to my channel will get a lot of tips and ideas of uh, about the techniques I use um, when I paint or draw. Uh, so let's get started with the painting now. Uh, just excuse me with the lighting and the angle and actually everything uh, about this video because this is my first video and I'll definitely try to improve in the future. Mm. In, uh, so for this painting, uh, we'll be uh, trying to paint a red panda. A red panda is the cutest animal on planet. Um, it is found in Himalayas and majorly in Himalayas and uh, part of Asia. Uh, and it's a very, very shy animal, very extremely cute and tiny and it has a lot of emotions in the eyes and uh, you will see now how we will build up the layers and get the panda uh, to life. So, here it goes. As you can see for the background, I'm using Liquitex Basics uh, spray paints. Um, uh, these spray paints come in a can. Uh, I just have got a black paint and a white paint. Uh, the basic two colors. Uh, what I do is just to get that blurry background effect. I uh, use these spray paints, make the images like as you can see at the background I have made those round yellow fruits and all that kind of stuff. Actually those fruits are not made yellow um, to start with. I have just used white and black to get that blurry effect and once I have that layer I add on to it with my basic acrylic paints and colors so I have used yellow on top of the white to get that blurry yellow uh, shape so because the spray paints are a little bit expensive um, I just have got two of them and I just want to stick with them for a while um, and then if I really like them I can just buy different colors um, and uh, to make the process easier for me in future uh, for this painting, I have used Liquitex Basics uh, acrylic paints as well, uh, which are really cheap and uh, pretty good quality paints, uh, which you can just use, experiment with it. You don't have to be worried about uh, wasting it a little bit. It's, it's, it's a pretty good medium to start with. Uh, and I think the quality is uh, really all right for me. It works well for me. Um, so I'm just sticking to those paints for a while now. For the background, uh, I'm uh, not for the background. Just the canvas I'm using is a Frederick's cotton canvas. It's a, it's an elliptical shaped canvas. Uh, it's a pretty good quality canvas and not very expensive as well. Uh, I got it uh, here in Melbourne from Eckersley um, store, Eckersley Art Store, uh, in the city. Uh, and uh, just to make it really really smooth uh, because whenever it comes to animal paintings I prefer the canvas or whatever surface I'm working on extremely extremely smooth so I have put a couple of layers of uh, gesso on it and sanded it with the sandpaper uh, the gesso I have used is a Mattis uh, brand gesso uh, that is also readily available everywhere um, so that's what I have done to get the really uh, smooth background and the surface. Um, for the panda, uh, I have, as you can see, I have already started blocking the complete canvas. So what I do to start with, with any painting is after I put my uh, basic uh, sketch on the canvas, uh, I use transfer paper to transfer it on the canvas. Um, after that, I just block the entire background uh, and once I get a little bit satisfactory background, I start working on the object itself. Uh, in this case, for the panda, uh, I have blocked the basic colors. Uh, the colors I have used uh, for uh, covering the panda uh, for the first four, three to four layers is, are very few colors I have used. It's just black and white uh, and yellow ochre. I have used um, a cadmium orange uh, and a burnt sienna um, paint. Yeah, so th these are the only paints I have used. 
for uh, like just a blocking in the first uh, four to five layers of panda and I also burnt sienna and all these shades I have used uh, for the branch as well as you can see um, for this painting I haven't focused a lot uh, on the detailing of background because the background I really wanted to have that blurry effect and also for the branch um, half of the branch I wanted that blurry effect again so I haven't focused a lot on the detailing of the branch uh, I'll build on layers on it but I won't stress too much about the accuracy or the contrast or the colors I'm going to use for the um, branch on which the panda is hanging. Uh, for this painting uh, the reference picture I have got uh, is from pixabay.com pixabay.com they have a lot of um, royalty free images uh, on their website uh, especially because I'm more interested into wildlife uh, paintings and uh, artwork uh, I go to Pixabay a lot I browse through their thousands of images and try to filter it out and get the best out of it uh, except uh, pixabay.com a couple of more uh, reference photo sites I refer to are uh, wildlife reference photos.com they you have to uh, pay uh, some amount to get the photos but it's pretty good and they have really good quality photos um, and uh, uh, then you have the copyright for it after you buy it but even on pixabay you get the full copyright so there is no uh, issue about that um, another uh, resource for my reference photo is one of my brothers um, he's a wildlife photographer and uh, I use his photos a lot he has amazing collection of photos so I use his photos and absolutely they are royalty free for me especially so I don't have to worry about copyright issues with them um, let me know if you want to find specific reference photos uh, for your artwork and I can try to find out the source for you if possible uh, but for me, I just refer to these couple of websites. Uh, as you can see now, coming back to the panda, I'm trying to build up more on the um, eye. Uh, I think eyes and the nose are the most important part uh, of any animal or bird you will be painting or drawing. Um, as you can see for the eyes and nose and all these uh, facial features of an animal or bird, what I try to do is... Uh, for the first basic layer, uh, one after I put the drawing in, I try to um, uh, block the black paint. So I try to define the shape of the eye with the black paint and with a very thin round brush or a bit, with a double zero brush or something. So once I do that, I'll put the lightest uh, color in the eye and then I try to build on the black uh, or darker portions of the eye. And then uh, after it dries, I'll put a layer of glaze, uh, I'll put the reflection in it. Then I'll again put another layer of glaze, I'll wait till it dries and then put the details and then again put another layer of glaze. So it's like a lot of layering, a lot and lot layering goes uh, if you want to have that um, really, really uh, 3D effect or you can say really realistic uh, effect on any uh, animal painting. Um, with the nose it's exactly the same principle as eyes uh, with the nose I try to build on the layers and try to make sure my details are correct I refer back to the reference photo again and again like with every stroke I try to do that uh, so that you just don't get carried away with the with your own instincts of how the animal looks and it shouldn't take over the actual reference photo detailing because once you go back to your reference photo again and again you make sure that you're trying to stick to the stick to your goal which is realism so that's what I try to achieve um, so with this uh, panda painting as you can see the panda is coming to life uh, gradually as I'm defining the white portions um, like uh, more properly and even the black portions um, I'll put some uh, more layers of uh, white and I'll try to glaze that white to tone down the white color with blues or sap greens so that I can show that the um, panda or any animal or bird you know it is reflecting the surrounding colors around it so that it looks more realistic again. Uh, for this painting, I'm uh, I have I haven't used a lot of brushes actually. I have used only maybe seven to eight brushes for this painting. Uh, 
because with acrylic it's very clean to uh, it's very easy to clean the brushes with water so you don't have to worry about um, having too many brushes in your hand so I'm using this um, two filbert brushes uh, one of it is size 4 uh, for most of the initial fur layers and one of it is size 10 which I have used for the background and uh, for the bigger portions of panda where I can go a little bit uh, freely. Uh, then I have used um, one round brush which is uh, uh, pretty small. It is size 1 or 2 I guess and I have used one more filbert um, which is size 2. I have used a liner brush and the most important two brushes I have used here is uh, there is one mop brush which is actually a makeup blush brush which I use which is referred to me by one of the artists online. I'll talk about her in um, some time. So uh, I'm using just a makeup brush as a mop brush to blend everything together. And the last brush and the most important one I'm using for this painting is a Bob Ra Ross wildlife fur brush. Uh, it is. It says it's one and a half inches it doesn't look one and a half inches but it says that and uh, it's R6344 wildlife fur brush and I have got it from amazon.com from the US I am actually I'm based in Australia Melbourne Australia but I have got it shipped to me from amazon.com uh, and this brush is amazing it I don't know I really like it for uh, my birds painting birds and animals with oil or acrylic actually I use this brush for oil paintings as well as acrylic paintings and it works really well for me. Yeah. So for the um, uh, furthermore layers, uh, now you can see that I am using more of a red oxide uh, color um, because it's a red panda. So of course I'll be using the red oxide color to get the exact exact contrast and define the colors better for this painting. Um, which you can see now uh, you can see the main focus of this painting is again not the leaves in the background or the branch but it's the cute cute little face of the panda it's so cute I think it's the cutest thing in the world it's really cute Okay, now to talk more about uh, my um, inspiration behind painting is uh, I'm uh, hugely inspired by Lisa from Lacry Fine Art. She's an amazing artist. She does really good job with her stuff. And I really like uh, her techniques and all the tips and everything she gives online. I like another artist which is, who is uh, Jason Morgan. Um, so he's a wildlife artist he has his YouTube channel I'll post uh, links to all their channels uh, in the description below they are my true inspirations I was really bad at my stuff I'm still not very happy with my skills but uh, I'm improving I'm trying to practice a lot and these are my inspirations uh, you can visit their web like their channels and they are amazing amazing they have amazing stuff and th hundreds of videos online and uh, Elisa is just uh, simply a brilliant artist I can say I'll talk more about her in my future videos um, so for this video uh, for this panda now the last thing I am putting together is whiskers and furthermore details trying to define the face more and all the furry details more and more um, and we come to the end of this painting I took four and a half hours to cover uh, to finish this painting um, I'm going to upload more and more such videos in future uh, for you to refer to and I'm going to share my experience and my progress everything with you guys and thank you so much for taking time out and watching this video I hope it helped you uh, to um, just get you moving with your art stuff thank you so much uh, please uh, visit my Facebook Twitter and Instagram page and subscribe to this channel thank you